This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Subsequent events. Subsequent events are events occurring between the period end and the date of the auditor's report, and also facts discovered after the audit report has been issued. Now this should be largely revision for you. Uh, and hopefully you remember that subsequent events are divided into adjusting events and non-adjusting events. So adjusting events are events which give evidence or more evidence of conditions that existed at the date of the statement of financial position. For example, at the date of at the statement of financial position, you're showing that a customer owed you $250,000. And of course, we, we are, are never, at that date, entirely sure whether that customer is ever going to pay us. I mean, most do, of course, and we uh, you know, don't have to make that many allowances against bad and doubtful debts and, and so on. Uh, but let's say that that customer subsequently went into liquidation let's say on the 31st of January, then it's really saying that uh, at the 31st of December, if we'd only known it, uh, then that debt was worthless. Uh, so the debt was worthless then, and the subsequent event is really the evidence arising on the 31st of January, which tells us it was worthless on the year end. And that would be an adjusting event uh, what we're saying is we should really write off that debt, that 250000 uh, At the year end, it shouldn't be figuring there at this value of 250000 Non-adjusting events uh, are conditions, uh, and if you like, all of which, everything to do with these conditions arose after the year end. And the, the, the classic example uh, here uh, is that your factory burns down on the 15th of January. Now, at year end, the 31st of December, your factory was perfectly healthy. There was not a wisp of smoke coming out of the factory and, and so on. It was standing there, it was producing. And the, the whole calamity, if you like, uh, happened after the year end. And that is a non-adjusting event. You would not go and remove the the, the, the factory from the non-current assets of anything of that sort. But of course, what you would do is to say it's pretty important that my uh, uh, shareholders know there isn't a factory anymore, and this will have serious uh, re repercussions, maybe on next, next year's income and even the going concern of the company if it can't uh, produce any goods for uh, another year or so. It would be uh, uh, highlighted in a note to the financial statements, assuming the whole thing was material, as in the case of the factory it would be. If uh, a non-adjusting uh, event occurs, remember it's going to be notes, but there's no kind of journal entry put through in the financial statements. If an adjusting entry occurs, the adjustment is a journal entry, essentially uh, a, a change in the figures on the financial statements. And sometimes, even if this uh, uh, subsequent event happens after the accounts have been issued, after the shareholders have the financial statements, uh, and then this adjusting event comes to light, uh, you may, as the auditor and as the, the company, have to take steps to alert them to the effect that really the financial statements that they have are wrong. Uh, because this subsequent event is evidence that there was uh, some um, you know, misvaluation, some error, some problem, if you like, in the financial statements. Until the audit report is signed, uh, remember that the auditors are still on duty. The audit doesn't end uh, until the audit report is signed. That, that's your last, kind of, that's your, where, where the guillotine comes down and says, I've done my work, I'm signing off the audit. But until then, you are every bit uh, as much on the lookout 
for evidence and events and occurrences and transactions and so on, uh, which uh, may be uh, ones which affect the financial statements. And this is known as an active duty. You will still, therefore, be carrying out audit work. You will still be looking for audit evidence. Uh, and we need sufficient uh, uh, audit evidence uh, that uh, all uh, uh, subsequent events have been identified. Uh, and, and some of these subsequent events may, of course, cause us to change the financial statements. So how are we going to kind of, you know, like keep on the alert, if you like? Uh, we, we've left the client, uh, you know, we're at the clients for, you know, three weeks in January. Now we're kind of come back to the office. Uh, we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, preparing the final financial statements, getting all the notes, uh, uh, you know, checking through all of those and so on, writing our summary for the engagement partner so that the engagement partner can go through the audit and decide whether to sign it off or not. Uh, and uh, we're not at the client, yet nevertheless we have this active duty uh, to find sufficient appropriate evidence that all subsequent events have been identified. How can we do it? Well, inquiry of management. Keep asking management, you know, has anything happened that uh, has uh, caused us perhaps to... to uh, have another look at some of the items in the financial statements. Uh, has a, 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 a debtor gone bad? Uh, has it turned out that some inventory which was in stock uh, is having to be marked down because we can't sell it in the new year uh, at all? Have we discovered that maybe uh, some of the assets at the balance sheet date should really be impaired uh, because we've uh, kind of decided that these assets, uh, you know, actually they're not going to be used anymore because we've stopped producing uh, the, the products that they were being used for manufacturing. Of course, uh, inquiry of management is never completely satisfactory. You're, you're putting almost too much reliance on them uh, uh, telling you the information and indeed even knowing the information. It can be quite difficult for uh, 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 directors uh, to, to, to know the significance, perhaps, of a subsequent event. So we also want to look at uh, the latest accounts and transactions, and look to see if in January, February, whatever time we have, they've written off a debt, or they've downvalued uh, inventory, or uh, the, uh, the sales seem to have tailed off, uh, so that the inventory looks as though it's, it's, it's not very fashionable or popular now, uh, and maybe we need to go back and have another look at its valuation. And board minutes, uh, big subsequent events, you would expect to see mentioned in the board minutes, a large debtor going bad, uh, for example. It's just the sort of stuff that, that would or ought to uh, worry the uh, directors. You might also look, I could put it on here, at correspondence. Look, maybe a correspondence with lawyers, correspondence with customers, uh, just to see you know, if there's anything in that correspondence uh, dealing with uh, perhaps a liability uh, that really existed at year end, but it's only now we're finding out about it, because it's only now that a, a lawyer or a, a customer who's maybe injured uh, it has begun to take action. After the audit report is signed, the, the, in a way, the, the, the guillotine comes down. We're kind of off duty. The audit is finished. We're not required to keep going on and doing more audit work. But if anything comes to our attention, uh, then we have to take action. So if kind of almost by luck we discovered uh, that a large debt at year end, that the uh, debtor had gone into liquidation, We've signed our audit report, uh, then of course it's really evidence that maybe financial statements are wrong and, and actually our audit report is wrong. Uh, and what we need to do is to try to, first of all, persuade management to correct the financial statements. And if the accounts hadn't been issued, we get management to change the financial statements. And if they did, we could issue another audit report uh, based on the new financial statements saying they showed a true and fair view. 
If management nevertheless was in possession of this audit report saying it's a true and fair view and they said no we're not going to alter the financial statements in the light of the subsequent event a bit difficult because management can uh, say look we have the clean audit report we're going to issue that with the financial statements and you're saying oh I wish I hadn't you, know, you shouldn't it's not a, it's, you know, the financial statements are wrong then the auditors uh, may have to take action themselves like contacting the shareholders themselves and they're entitled to do that to alert the shareholders that uh, the financial statements they're getting are wrong that the financial uh, that the the audit report is actually wrong and here's why and if the uh, 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 the the financial statements had already been issued before we discovered these event again we should take steps to try to correct them now it's 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 going to be fairly rare that we've done the audit we've signed off the audit the financial statements are issued and then we find a subsequent event which kind of backdates itself uh, to the date of the statement of financial position but it can happen and what, what's important is that the auditors tries to, to to rescue a bad situation what the auditors don't want is for the shareholders to be misled even though it's kind of embarrassing for the auditors to admit the financial statements you've been sent are wrong we know they have a clean bill of health and the audit report but actually the audit report is wrong now as well 